I have divided my talk, The Women's Rights in Islam, into six broad headings. The spiritual rights of the women in Islam, the economic rights of the women in Islam, the social rights of the women in Islam, the educational rights of the women in Islam, the legal rights of the women in Islam, and the political rights of the women in Islam. I have divided my talk into six broad headings. First, we'll discuss the spiritual rights of the women in Islam. There is a very common misconception, especially amongst the Westerners, that in Islam, paradise is only meant for the men, only for the males. This misconception can be easily clarified by quoting just one verse of the Quran, of Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 124, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that if any of you do deeds of righteousness, be it a male or a female, and has faith, he will surely enter Jannah, he will surely go to heaven, and not the least injustice shall be done to them. The same message is repeated in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 97 where Allah says that if any of you do good deeds, be it a male or a female, and is a believer, we will surely reward him for what he has done and we will make him lead a good life. These verses are explicit and clear that going to paradise depends upon a person's faith and his righteous deeds. Iman and amal salihat Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 1 Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum allazi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha O you men kind reverend your guardian lord who has created you from a single person and has created his mate of like nature that means the mate of the man, that is the female, has been created of the same spiritual nature as that of the man. Furthermore, it's mentioned in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse number 11. Fatru samawati wal arda, ja'ala lukum min anfuskum azwaja. It is he who has created the heaven and the earth and created like nature his mate. That means the spiritual nature of man and woman is the same. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 9, Summa sawahu wa nafaka fihi min ruhihi That we have made them in due proportion and have blown into them our spirit. The same message repeated in Surah Al-Hijr, chapter number 15, verse number 29 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human beings in due proportion and has put into them his spirit. And then they fall down in obedience. What does Allah mean when he says that we have blown the spirit into the human beings? It does not mean something like a God incarnate or something like a pantheistic form. It means that Almighty God has given his knowledge into every human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the knowledge of the creator in all the human beings, the males as well as the females. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 70, We have honored the children of Adam. Almighty God says in the Quran that all the children of Adam, all the children of Adam, irrespective whether they are male or female, they have been honored irrespective whether they're black or white, yellow or brown, rich or poor, Almighty God has honored all the children of Adam. Irrespective whether they're staying in America, in UK, in Canada, 
in India, in Saudi Arabia, Almighty God has honored all the children of Adam. There are certain non-Islamic religions who put the blame only on Eve, may Allah be pleased with her, for tempting Adam to eat the forbidden fruit because of which humankind is born in sin. And when you read the Bible, Genesis chapter number 3, it says that Eve, may Allah be pleased with her, was responsible for tempting Adam to eat the forbidden fruit because of which humankind is born in sin. There is not a single verse in the Quran which puts the blame only on Eve, may Allah be pleased with her. The blame is put equally on both of them, on Adam as well as on Eve. May peace be upon them. And if you read the Quran, it's mentioned in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 19 to 27, Adam and Eve, peace be upon them, they are addressed a dozen of times. It's mentioned there that both of them, they made a mistake. Both of them repented and both were forgiven. The blame is put equally on both of them. There is not a single verse of the Quran which puts the blame on Eve alone exclusively. But there is a verse in the Quran, in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 121, which says that Adam, peace be upon him, he disobeyed God. But there's no verse exclusively saying that Eve was responsible, peace be upon him. But overall, if you read the Quran, as I said, you cannot pick up one verse. If you read the Quran overall, we have to agree that both of them, they made a mistake, both of them repented, and both were forgiven. Further, when you read the Bible, in the book of Genesis, chapter number 3, verse number 16, it says, Almighty God says, He says to the woman, that I will multiply your conception, and you will give birth in pain and sorrow. And your desire shall be your husband, and he will rule over you. So according to the Bible, pregnancy is a curse of Almighty God. It's a punishment. God says, I will multiply you in conception. And you will bear children in pain and sorrow. As though it's a punishment of Almighty God on the woman. Pregnancy is a curse, it's a punishment. And it says that your desire shall be that of your husband and he will rule you. In fact, if you read the Quran, there's a great contrast. The Quran says exactly the opposite. The Quran uplifts the woman because of pregnancy. The Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 1, it says, respect the womb that bore you. Quran says in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 14, we have enjoined on the human beings to be kind to the parents. In travail upon travail did the mother bore you, and in pain did she give you birth. The Quran says, respect your parents, especially your mother, because she bore you in pain. In trouble upon trouble did she bore you, and in pain she'd give you birth. Same message repeated in Surah Aqaf, chapter number 46, verse number 15. We have enjoined on the human beings to be good to the parents. In pain did she bore you, and in pain did she give you birth. That means, because of the pains that the mother bears, and the pain she takes while giving you birth, the Quran says you have to respect her. It uplifts the woman. Pregnancy uplifts the woman, does not degrade her. And if you analyze the Quran, the Quran gives the criteria of Almighty God to judge a human being in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 13, where it says, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakrin wa unsa wa jalnaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna kramuk min dhulayat kaakum inna la alimun khabir O humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you shall recognize each other not that you shall despise each other and the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has taqwa the only criteria for Almighty God to differentiate one human being above other, it is not sex, it's not caste, 
It's not color, it's not wealth, it's not age, but it is taqwa. It is God consciousness, it is piety, it's righteousness. The only criteria for Almighty God to differentiate one human being above the other, it is God consciousness, it is piety, it is righteousness, it is never sex. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number 195. Never will I suffer the loss of any of you, be it male or female, you are partners unto one another. Almighty God says, never will I let any of your work go waste, irrespective whether you are a male or a female, you are partners unto one another. The spiritual aspects of the men and women has been described in a nutshell in Surah Azab. Chapter number 33, verse number 35, the ayah that I quote in the beginning of my talk, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innal muslimina wal muslimati, for Muslim men and women, wal mu'minina wal mu'minati, for believing men and women, wal qanitina wal qanitati, for devout men and women, wa sadiqina wa sadiqati, for true men and women. Wasabirina wasabirati for men and women who are patient and constant. Wal khoshiina wal khoshiati for men and women those who humble themselves. Wal mutasaddikina wal mutasaddikati for men and women who give in charity. Wasaimina wasaimati for men and women who fast. Wal hafizina frujum wal hafizati for men and women who guard their chastity and modesty. For men and women who engage much in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's praise. For them, Allah has prepared forgiveness and ample of reward. Allah says that for Muslim men and women, for believing men and women, for devout men and women, for true men and women, for men and women who are patient as well as constant, for men and women who humble themselves, for men and women who give in charity, for men and women who guard their chastity and modesty, for men and women who engage in Allah's praise, for them, Allah has prepared forgiveness and ample of reward. By reading this verse, we come to know that the spiritual duties of men and women in Islam are the same. Both have to submit their will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both have to believe. Both have to be devout. Both have to be true. Both have to do sabr, patience and constancy. Both have to pray. Both have to give charity. Both have to fast, both have to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By these verses of the Quran, we come to know that spiritually, men and women are equal. Just because the Quran says that spiritually, men and women are equal, what would you decide? Are the women's rights in Islam protected or are they subjugated? 